Everyone, welcome to the Body Beat Down. Hey, what's going on, guys? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking the Body Beat Down here on this Friday morning. We'll do a little spin and chit chat, I reckon. Uh, the internet's out right now, so I can't watch any of my programs. Programs, I'm that old that I say programs. So, uh, Let's spin a little bit and uh, talk about something. I don't know what. So, anyway. So in order for you to hear me, that means I may not spin as fast as I usually would. Which I don't spin real fast anyway. I usually keep it anywhere between 40 and 45 RPM. Michael, what does that look like? Well, this is 41 RPM right here. That's 42. That's 44. And 45 is right here. So, I don't spin real fast. No real reason to. So, we made it. We made it to Friday, guys. And I'm pretty happy. I'm always ready for the weekend. And uh, it's raining. So my morning bus route was a little treacherous. Uh, you can't see. Uh, it cuts down your visibility probably 90% and I have a couple of spots that I got to back up into and we live in the country so it's not like backing up in a city where there's lights everywhere you know we're, we're doing this in the dark the one one spot I had to have one of the older kids kind of spot me looking out the back window to make sure I'm getting into the drive decently so yeah it makes it a little bit difficult plus all the windows fog up or you know whatever it is that they always do nothing you can do about that it's hard enough to control that in your own little car much less a big you know 35 foot long bus so uh this week, with my working out, of course, if you've been following, uh, I'm taking a light week this week. And uh, so far, so good. Uh, I've even added in a couple little different things, maybe some jumping jacks and push-ups along the way or what have you. Today, we're going to do a little bit more uh, with our workout. Uh, we're going to do some incline dumbbell chest pressing which is nothing new and uh, we're gonna do some pull-ups for the old back and then I got a couple of other things I'm gonna put off in there as extras I'll let you wait for that it's gonna be amazing simply amazing uh, everything's going pretty good uh, I have cut down my food intake even more. Uh, I'm wanting to drop some weight. And with dropping weight, uh, I'm also going to end up dropping the weight, you know, amounts that I do because you can only, you know, you only got so much strength and there's only so much you can do when you're cutting calories. And uh, I don't really eat that much anyway, but sometimes I sometimes I like to have too much of a portion. Uh, I guess probably mostly on my supper. You know, I'll, I'll have like a big plate, and even if it's just chicken and vegetables, or fish and vegetables, or something, you know, something good like that. I usually will tend to eat too much of it. 
So even too much of a good thing is not good. So uh, cutting down portion size. And uh, so far the last couple nights, I went to bed kind of hungry, which is what I have to do to drop weight. And, uh, so uh, from my experience a couple of years ago when I did this, and I was going to bed hungry and waking up hungry, I know that that's pretty much what I got to do. You know, I'm not one of those people that can just stop drinking soda and lose 30 pounds. There's some people that do that. Yeah, stop drinking soda and just drinking water. I dropped 30 pounds. Really? That made me gain 10 pounds, just you telling me that. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of wild how we're all so different when it comes to that kind of stuff, you know? My family's always held weight. We've always been just beefy. So, I'll say beefy. Because I don't consider any of us fat, really. Even though I got a gut, I don't really consider myself fat. I consider myself beefy. But, yeah, we just, we hold weight easily. And a lot of times we don't look as heavy as we are. You know, I'll tell people I'm 280 pounds and they're like, really? You don't look that big. So, yeah, that's pretty hefty. And it don't matter if you've got a lot of muscle. Like, I have a lot of muscle under my, my beefiness. I have some muscle under there, of course, to move these kind of weights. But it don't really matter. It's still a lot of weight that you're having to carry around all the time. And that's not good for you. It don't matter if it's a healthy weight or a not healthy weight. It still ain't real healthy for your heart. So, and sometimes we forget that we're not 15 anymore, or we're not 25 anymore. We're not 30s and 40s. <laughs> but, uh, you know, once you start getting up there, you know, now you've got 50 years worth of all this stuff building up in your arteries and all that stuff. And, and going by statistics, pretty much all of us are going to suffer from some sort of a heart attack or stroke, cardiac arrest, mostly as males. So, you know, statistically, it's not good. It's like it's probably about the same as a successful marriage or divorce, divorce rate. It's, it's up there pretty good. So I'm just trying to drop a few pounds. I'm trying to add in a couple little things with my working out to, just to kind of give some variety to myself. You know, there's some of us out here that like to do things other than just bench press or cheat curls, or stuff like that. There's some of us out here that like to do things, and uh, we all train differently. And you got some people out there in YouTube land that they like to think that we're all supposed to do the same thing. That we're all on the, we're all supposed to be on the same path and the same journey and the same goals. And that's not how it is. Not how it works out, guys. So I kind of noticed that I'm staying around 44, 45 RPMs. That's good. That's just enough to, to give you a nice little subtle cardio workout. You don't have to go crazy on these things. So anyhow, uh, Always remember to 
leave comments on the videos or in my community posts and uh, let me know what you're doing. I'm interested in what you're doing. Whether it's stuff like this, working out, going for a walk, swimming, playing golf, tennis, bowling. I don't care if it's art related or you're drawing or painting or photography, stamp collecting. I don't care what you're doing. Collecting action figures. Let me know because it's all good. It's all healthy. And uh, that's what this channel is about. It's not just about working out. It's about everything that encompasses health and fitness and uh, even hobbies and passions such as those things that I mentioned are just as important as lifting a weight. So, uh, I was going to do a walk and talk this weekend, and I probably still will. That's, that's usually what I do on the weekend. But I might go ahead and talk about something now that concerns my workouts. And I kind of touched on it already, but we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and talk about it a little bit more. So as you know, from the beginning, uh, I started working out again back in early 2021. And uh, I really didn't have any goals at the time. Nothing set in stone. I just wanted to get to working out again because it's been a long time. And uh, eventually down the road, I started making little goals for myself. And uh, if you've kept up with my channel, you know that I've reached every goal that I've went for. And uh, some people out there don't don't understand that. And uh, we're not, you know, we're not out here just doing nothing. We're actually doing something. Like I said, we're all different. We're doing different things. We have different reasons, different things we're trying to accomplish. So, I've reached a lot of goals that I'm proud of. And uh, number one, you can't let anyone take that away from you. Don't worry about someone else's goals and what they want. You worry about your own. That's where you're going to find the happiness with what you're doing is following your own goals, your own ideas and your passions and all that when it comes to this kind of stuff when it comes to anything. Be yourself. So, I reached all my goals. I've reached other small goals in between these goals. And that's really what I set out to accomplish. That was it. And I've mentioned it since the beginning that I kind of started thinking about goals. Once I started thinking about goals until today. I've mentioned it off and on here and there that, you know, once you reach these goals, you're, you're satisfied. A lot of times you're satisfied. Sometimes you want to reach new goals. Sometimes you might set another goal. Well, for me, I was pretty content with all the goals that I, that I reached. I didn't think, well, gosh darn it, maybe I should do more. I felt that I felt that a little bit on my squats and some on my bench pressing. Thought maybe I'd go up a little bit more, and I still might. I don't know what I'm doing. Things change all the time. That's what's good. Is you can change all the time. That's up to you. But as far as my goals go, I'm done. And so now what do I do? Well, I'm wanting, to, I'm wanting to lose a little weight. That means that my food consumption is going to be less. My calorie intake is going to be less. The amount 
of heavy weights that I can move, just move. <laughs> the amount of heavy weights that I can move are going to decrease. That's natural. That's how it works. And the things that I want to implement into my working out are going to change. And how many days that I lift are going to change. Right now I lift five days a week. Plus on the weekends, I do my walk and I hit the heavy bag. So, you know, as of right now, I got ideas going through my head. And my piece of paper is over there on my desk, so I'm going to have to wing it. I'm going to have to wing it like Tommy Boy. Wing it. So, eventually, this, this could be next week, or it could be six months from now. I don't know what I'm going to do. But eventually, I'm going to go down to, most likely, working out with weights three days a week. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So let's say for instance, Monday might be chest and tricep. Wednesday might be legs and bicep. And Friday might be deadlifts and back and or shoulders, just kind of alternating. And then I'm thinking about on Tuesdays and Thursdays, adding in, you know, just more cardio, maybe maybe walking on those two days. Remember, I used to walk five, six, seven days a week. I don't do that anymore. So I might implement more walking. I might implement cycling again. Uh, I used to cycle, for those of you that don't know. I might implement more like calisthenics or whatever you want to call jumping jacks and sit-ups and push-ups and burpees and all that other kind of stuff. Things like that. Uh, I might implement more of that. And that's not might. I, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so a jumping rope and stuff like that. Uh, flipping tires, throwing tires, doing stuff like that. So. When I say we're going to, I've mentioned a few times that there's going to be big changes. That's what I'm talking about. See, there's only so much that I can do as far as lifting. And I'm not young like a lot of you. And a lot of you, some of you out there, like to compare yourselves uh, to older people. I don't know why, but... I'm 52 years old, I'm gonna be 53 in a couple months. Chronic bad back, bad shoulders, bad hip, all that stuff. And I've accomplished all this with all that against me. So, for anyone out there who likes to give me a hard time, you might wanna look at that and maybe say good job, because on top of all that, I have chronic depression and anxiety. And I have other things in my life that take my mind off you know, health and fitness a lot of times, but I still do it. I have a lot of things going against me, but I still do it. So there's a lot going on in some people's lives that you don't know about, or maybe you do know about, but you just don't care about. So. You need to think about these things before you try to compare yourself to someone else. So my workouts at some point are going to take a turn for what I just mentioned. Probably three days a week lifting and more cardio and just more activity. Being more active and moving. I don't want to call it cardio. I want to call it movement. Real world movements that are healthy and good for you. And 
and uh, touching back on the diet side, on the nutrition side, you know, uh, sometimes the more active you get, not sometimes, pretty much all the time, the more active you get, the hungrier you get because you're burning a lot of calories. So there's kind of that double-edged sword there where you add in more activities and you might get more hungry. And if you don't add in the more activities, well, you're still doing, you're just doing the same stuff you always did. So, in my, for me right now, uh, what's important to me is trying to be a little bit more mobile, trying to be a little bit, feel, to feel a little bit healthier. Because a couple of years ago when I dropped all that weight, I felt like I was 20 years old again. I was able to jog a mile, two miles, hold a camera, take a video while I'm jogging, talking, breathing. You know, I was able to do that. Not a fast jog, I'm not a fast jogger, I'm a slow jogger, but still jogging. And I was able to take videos and talk and not pass out and not be dead. Now I'm lucky to be able to move from this to my computer chair without <clears throat> can't breathe I'm bloated I feel sick I feel dead that's how I feel all the time nobody wants to feel that way and what's more important bench pressing 400 pounds 450 pounds for the 10 hundred time or being able to move around and not feel like you're going to pass out dead The way I look at it anymore is if I bench press 405 pounds 500 times, what's it matter when there's someone else out there who's bench pressed it 5,000 times? What's it matter? It's not like I'm going to break any records. It's not like I'm going to, you know, the news channel's not going to come knocking on my door. Sir, can you please show us you bench pressing 400 pounds again for the 500th time? You're amazing. No, nobody cares. Nobody cares about that. What's important is your health and how you feel. Because without that, none of this matters. Nothing else matters. And if you're trying to be a spokesperson for health and fitness, you should try and maybe live that way a little bit better. Not that I don't not that I don't feel like I don't represent it well enough, but people are going to look at me in my gut and think, well, this guy don't know what he's talking about. He has a gut. Well, they also don't know that I hold weight just by breathing. So, you know, th there comes a time when you just got to change things up. And... A lot of people out there, if you notice, a lot of these guys out there lifting are overweight. It don't matter if our BMI is, you know, this or that. That don't really matter. Like I mentioned earlier, what matters is how much weight are you carrying around and how much strain is that on your heart. That's what matters. You got a lot of these guys out there that are my size or bigger that... They might be pushing 400 pounds every day, 500 pounds, 1,200 pounds, whatever it is people are doing, but they're this big around. That's not very good to me. Not real impressive. You know, sometimes I look at even my own lifts and I think, well, it's impressive, but at the same time, if I didn't have my gut, Maybe it would look more impressive. Maybe it would be more impressive. Because I'd be a lighter weight. I'd look a little healthier. I'd feel a little healthier. And it would come across to the public as better, as healthier, as more of a positive influence. So, there's just a lot that's going to happen. And, uh, 
There's some other things that I want to talk about, but it's in one ear and out the other ear, and I'm kind of tired of talking about it. But uh, I used to have a, a trailer for my channel. You know, you can make trailers for your channels. I used to have a trailer at one point, and they're just kind of introducing the, the channel and all that kind of stuff, and, and uh, I got rid of it. Or just, you know, I didn't delete it or anything. I just did away with the trailer. But I'm going to make a new trailer uh, today, tomorrow, whatever. And it's going to be an informative trailer. It's going to be introducing the channel. And it's going to be also warning people against uh, what's bad out there in the social media land. And to be careful of who you listen to and kind of kind of a quick kind of summary of, of everything kind of mashed up real quick into a trailer. So there's this there's a lot of bad stuff going on in social media. And it's just not it's not just with what I'm dealing with, which is crazy. But there's just a lot of stuff out there that people need to need to be aware of. And you have a lot of, you know, naive people that see, that see certain things and they don't know any better. And they need to have a place where they can go to, hey, this guy's saying, be careful. You don't know what's out there. Yada, yada, yada. There's some misinformation. Be on the lookout for that type of stuff. So, there's some, you know, people take stuff and they run with it. A lot of these channels out there and social media and stuff, they're a lot like the old school newspaper and magazines like the National Enquirer or the Globe or for you new people, maybe TMZ, stuff like that where it's a bunch of crazy gossip. You get like about this much truth, about that much truth and then everything else is just kind of stupid and blown out of proportion and just there for drama and uh, getting views and uh, magazine sales, whatever, you know, that's old school magazines. <laughs> People don't do magazines and newspapers anymore. But there's a lot of stuff out there just to get your attention and just to get clicks and traffic and subscribers and followers and stuff like that. People are suckers for that kind of stuff. Even though, even though they know it's wrong, they know there's a lot of just mis misinformation in these things. They're suckers for it because a lot of people like that kind of stuff. So I've, I've never, I've never been about all that. I don't care about all that. Matter of fact, you know, uh, I'm subscribed to a guy who mentions like other channels and other things like that that have controversy, and I'm like, I, I, I just don't follow them. I don't, I don't know anything about them. You know, I don't know. I don't keep up with that kind of stuff. I do my thing. I try to hook up with decent people, and even then, I, I don't know. I just got to take things at face value. You don't know people. Really, I, I just try to I try to stick with decency, but that's hard to find. Because even if someone is decent to you on, like, YouTube, to your face, you know, to your face, we'll say to your face while well, typing in videos, you know, maybe they're, they say something nice, but behind your back, they might be saying something else on YouTube. And behind your back, they might be on another platform talking about you or what have you. So you don't really know people at all. And that is one reason why I've distanced myself from people uh, in my real world. And uh, even online, I've distanced myself from some people. Because I don't care about all that. I'm not here for that. I don't care nothing about it. Uh, what you see with me online is what you get in the real world. That's it. I'm just a decent guy who tries to do decent things. That's it. I have good days. I have bad days. Just like anyone out there. But I have a good heart. I have a good soul, a good mind, a good spirit. It's just sometimes it gets bogged down with 
trash like that that you kind of come across on all these different platforms uh, and just different people. So, anyway, guys, we're at 25 seconds left. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you stick around for more content because, like I said, we're changing things up. Maybe like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff to the body beat down. That's me, Michael, your incredible host on this Friday. Get up, get out, get rad. Do it to it, and uh, we'll see you later, guys. Get up, get out, get rad, and do it to it!